Jeffrey Dahmer, Hannibal Lecter. These are the people this lady is being compared to. So I'm gonna do my best to mask all the events that happen in this story. Before we begin, I'm thinking of changing my name on my YouTube channel. Something that lets people know that this is a true crime channel. Do y'all think this is a good idea? And if so, give me some names I can choose from in the comments. Also, hit that like, subscribe, and turn those notifications on so you don't miss out on any video. Now, let's get to this one. Omara Ari was born in 1968 in Egypt, and it was said that she had a pretty rough upbringing. Her father was an abusive man who often took out his frustrations on her and her mother. Then as she grew older, Omaima had to submit herself to sexual humiliation just to survive, and on top of that, she had been subject to female genital mutilation, meaning her private parts were circumcised. Now this was something practiced over in these other countries, which was rooted by gender inequality and to control female sexuality. When this procedure was done, females weren't even given anything to block the pain. This female circumcision didn't have any known health benefits. In fact, it caused problems with reoccurring infections, difficulty urinating, and could stop them from getting pregnant. But I digress. Now eventually, Omaima and her mother were able to escape this cruel man, and despite everything she had been through, she turned out to be a very vibrant and pretty young lady. By the time she turned 18 years old, she immigrated over to the U.S., where she first found work as a nanny for a family in California. But with her beauty, physique, and those glass-cut cheekbones, it wasn't long before she was picked up by this agency to model for them. Now, around October of 1991, 23-year-old Mima was at this bar playing pool when she caught the eye of Bill Nelson, or William Nelson. Bill was a 56-year-old pilot from Texas who seemed to be into a lot of illegal activities in his past. Back in 1984, he was a known drug smuggler that trafficked marijuana throughout the country, but after he was caught, he was fired from his pilot job and he had to serve a four-year sentence in a federal prison. Once Bill's sentence was over, he wanted to start over, so he headed over to Orange County and soon landed this job at this prestigious mortgage company. Now, Bill was one of those flashy and outgoing guys. He was from Texas, so of course, he had that big belt buckle and wore a cowboy hat. Omaima, who was still barely getting by working as a model, thought to herself this would be the perfect opportunity to get with a man who could take care of her while she pursued her dreams. So once they talked to each other for a while, the rest was history. Within just a week or so, Bill proposed to Omaima and the two soon tied the knot. At first, Bill seemed to be a very generous and loving guy. For their honeymoon, he told Omaima he owned a ranch in Texas so they could spend their honeymoon there and get to know each other a little bit better. But what he really wanted to do was show off his 23-year-old wife to his relatives. Now, once they finally made it there, Bill whined and dined Omaima. He showed off all the land he owned, took her horseback riding, and even called up his daughter, whom he had with his previous wife, and told her how good everything was going and invited her to Thanksgiving to meet Omaima. Now, life was good for these newlyweds during their month-long relationship, but it wasn't long before Bill would show his true colors. Once they made it back to their apartment in California, Bill allegedly became violent with her and started physically, mentally, and sexually abusing her. On the Thanksgiving weekend of 1991, Omaima and Bill were in their apartment in different rooms. Bill already knew Omaima was with him for his money, so he felt that since he was paying for her lavish lifestyle, he should be rewarded with, you know what. So Bill goes into a room and tries to seduce his wife, but at the time, Omaima wasn't in the mood. Allegedly, this is when Bill became very upset and started abusing and forcing himself on her. Although Amaima repeatedly tried her best to get away from him, Bill was a pretty big guy who was raised on a farm, so no matter how hard she pushed and kicked, there wasn't no escaping. Now, while Amaima continued to struggle to get away, she noticed a clothing iron in arm's reach. So she grabbed the iron and knocked Bill across the head with it. As she continued to beat on him with the iron, she saw a pair of scissors on the counter, so she grabbed it and began stabbing him everywhere she could until she killed him. So over the next few days, Omaima felt that no one's going to believe her story that she was getting abused. So she needed to get rid of this body in hopes that no one would start to miss Bill. So one day she goes over to one of her ex's house and tells him that she was being assaulted by her husband and she accidentally killed him in self-defense. She goes on to tell him she had been doing stuff with his body to try to get rid of it, then showed him the trash bag with 
bill in it. She then allegedly offered $75,000 and two motorcycles to help her with getting rid of the, the rest of it. The ex was like, sure, I'll help you. Just give me some time to come up with a plan and I'll get back with you. You go ahead and head back home and I'll come over there when I have this plan. So Omaima leaves his house and as soon as she drives away, he immediately calls the police to inform them of what she had told him. Now I'm not sure what was going on in Omaima's head, but this next part of the story is a bit disturbing and gory. So I'm gonna block out some of the words or just give y'all demonstrations of what she actually did. Okay, so shortly afterwards, the police found Omaima driving a red drop top Corvette and pulled her over. They told her that she matched the description of a murder suspect, but as they were talking to her, they noticed a black bag sitting in the passenger seat. Omaima tries to deflect the officer's questions, but she was asked to get out that car. As the authorities sorted through all the bags, Omaima just sat there with this blank stare on her face, but when they finally realized what was in there, they were in absolute disbelief. The bags contain two of the things that allow you to breathe with black marks on them that show the victim smoked. Immediately, the police turns back to Omaima and asks her what is going on. She tells them that her husband, Bill, was responsible for those. She stated that Bill told her to dispose of them while he went away on a business trip. Now, though the police couldn't determine who the parts belonged to, they detained Omaima for questioning while they obtained a search warrant for their apartment. Now, it wasn't long before the investigators got the search warrant, and when they went inside Bill and Omaima's apartment, it was like she was performing some kind of sick ritual with Bill's parts. There were suitcases with large trash bags in them filled with Bill's parts. Then in the bedroom, the bed frame was completely broken and the entire mattress was stained with blood. Lying next to the bed was a broken lamp and a clothing iron that had blood and hair all over them. Now, mind you, Bill was a pretty big man, so parts of him was everywhere. In the bathroom, hanging from a shower rod was a hanger with Bill's hollowed upper torso. As they continued to search their apartment, they came across a deep fryer, and in this deep fryer was Bill's, you know what, cooked with Thanksgiving meat. As they looked in the trash can, there was dressing, cranberry sauce, and parts of him cooked in there as well. I know you're probably thinking, it can't get any worse than this, but let me tell you, it definitely can. So once they finish placing all the evidence in the bags, the investigators go to the refrigerator just to make sure nothing else was hiding in there. At first, the freezer looked like it was full with frozen veggies, but when they looked closer to the back, nothing could have prepared them for what they saw wrapped in tinfoil. As they started unwrapping the tinfoil, they realized that this was Bill's thinker, seasoned and deep fried. When the investigators spoke with the neighbors, they stated they heard the garbage disposal running continuously throughout the day until it broke. Now when all Bill's parts were weighed, they compared it to how much he weighed on his driver's license and over 80 pounds were still missing, suggesting that Omaima could have had Thanksgiving dinner with him with him. Now, while Omaima was being investigated, she told the authorities that she couldn't remember anything and stated she woke up one day and found him dead, but after the police provided her with all the evidence they had, she started talking. She claimed that it was all self-defense. In addition to trading out her body, Bill routinely bound her against her will and messed with her. Then she claimed on Thanksgiving Day, Bill had assaulted her again and she had a fear that he was going to kill her. In December of 1992, the trial for Bill Nelson's murder began. Omar's defense team at the time of the trial said that there were no disputes that she didn't kill Bill, but she acted in self-defense. He stated that she had been involved in other abusive relationships and as a result, had long been suffering from battered woman syndrome. With everything Omaira had to endure from her childhood to now, triggered that psychotic event. The defense also portrayed Bill as this sadistic man who tortured his wife sexually, physically, and psychologically. For example, Omaima had adopted a kitten weeks after they were married, and allegedly, while they were driving down the road, Bill snatched the animal out of her lap while the car was moving and, you know, tossed it out. Then, on top of that, he threatened to bury her in the desert during one of their road trips if she didn't comply with all of his demands. 
Now with the severe stress Omira had been through, she was given a psychological evaluation that revealed she did suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. The psychiatrist testified that she told him it was demons or something inside her that made her do what she did. She even said she had a vision of two blood-covered women that told her repeatedly that Bill had to die. He also testified that before preparing for her, her husband, literally, she put on red shoes, a red hat, and red lipstick. He went on to say that initially she told him after she prepared the ribs with barbecue sauce, she ate some of them and said, I like mine's tender, like in the restaurant. It's so sweet, so delicious, but she later denied those allegations. Now the prosecution, on the other hand, felt that she had other motives. They believed she had been plotting to steal from her husband because she had a history of using her sexuality to con older men out their money. They stated when she first arrived to the United States, allegedly she began using her beauty to get older men to shower her with money to pay her rent and buy her cars. Now during the trial, one of her ex-boyfriends were called to the stand and he testified that she chained him to a bed one night, pulled her gun on him and demanded he tell her where he kept all his money. But fortunately, he broke free without her getting anything and took the gun from her. When they asked why he didn't call the police, he stated, I was too embarrassed. Now the Orange County Deputy District Attorney stated, Omaima was a scam artist who preyed on men and using kinky bondage games was her go-to when she wanted to rob them. Now later on in the trial, Omaima was called to the stand. She admitted to the jury that she unalived him to prevent him from hurting her again and stated she was out of her mind when she did all those crazy things. She also admitted that she did what she did to his hands to remove fingerprints and mixed up certain stuff with Turkey to try to get rid of him. Now, it doesn't stop there. It was reported that she also cut off his, you know what, and was planning on feeding it to Bill's family. Now, Omaima's defense team utilized a forensic psychologist to assert that Bill actually did assault her on a daily basis. Anytime Omaima refused to do anything, he would get mad and say, I paid for you, so give me what I paid for. This is what they claim drove her to do what she did. It took six long weeks for the jury to deliberate due to everything they had to consider, but on January 4th, 1993, Omaima Nelson was acquitted of first degree murder due to insufficient evidence of premeditated murder, but declared her guilty of second degree murder, assault, and false imprisonment of her ex-boyfriend. The Superior Court judge sentenced Omaima to 27 years to life at the Central California Women's Facility in Chichala. Once the verdict was read, Omaima apologized to the family, stating, if I didn't defend myself, I would have been dead. I'm sorry it happened, but I'm glad I'm alive. I'm sorry I dismissed him. In 2006 and 2011, Omaima was denied parole as she was found to be an unpredictable threat to public safety. At her parole hearing, Bill Nelson's 35-year-old daughter, Margaret Nelson, spoke about her father not being able to attend her wedding or even meeting his granddaughter. Then she revealed her father had invited her to that fateful Thanksgiving dinner to meet his new wife, but she had angrily refused. Margaret stated her only reason for attending this hearing was to return some human dignity to the man who was her father. Now, Omaima remarried while she was in prison, this time to a man that was in his 70s who died before her second bid for parole in 2011. She stated that they had three conjugal visits and while they were doing what they were doing, there were knives in the kitchen, but he never felt threatened or in danger in any way. She claimed she actually loved this man. In 2026, just two years from now, Omaima Nelson will be eligible for parole again, and she will be 58 years old. So, if there's any older fellas out there that's looking for a soulmate, she'll be ready for you in a couple years. Nah, I'm just kidding. But this will bring this gruesome video to an end. I don't think I could ever be with someone who has been to jail for murder or even attempted murder, but what about y'all? Would y'all ever consider being with someone that's been convicted of murder? Listen. Thank y'all so much for the love and comments. If you want to continue to show your love, go ahead and hit that like, subscribe, and turn those notifications on. I wish you all the best in your future endeavors. And until next time, stay mysterious, my friend.